Hi, this is Double 975 and today I'm taking a look at the Conda. This is not going to be a totally in-depth review, this is just going to be a brief look at the Conda. The formerly the biggest, baddest ship in the game that now has two usurpers in the Corvette and the Cutter. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still a big, bad ship. And I actually like the feeling of the cockpit, the fact that they've made the voice echoey in here because it's so big, the fact that you're sat in the middle, the fact it's got that little keyboard, which is a beautiful touch by the way, I absolutely love the little touches in this game. It is a big bad ship, it has a lot of weaponry, and a lot of very good weaponry. And with shield cell banks and shield boosters for days, this thing can become a complete tank. Now I put bi weaves on mine, but even with the bi weave shield, with that many shield boosters, the shield, cell st uh, the shield strength was really ridiculous and the recharge rate was really really funny. Uh, because I was using it as a PvE harvester, you know, I had enough shields to last through any fight versus pretty much any wing that I encountered in red sites, and I didn't have to wait so long between fights or burn through shield cell banks. I could quite happily wait for my shields to recharge most of the time, and obviously the shield cell banks there were for emergencies. Now they've left this thing in an awkward position, but it's you know a bridge to the two real big boys. Obviously the Cutter, and to a certain extent the Type 9 are better than this at trading, but the, this has some massive advantages over the Type 9 in survivability and jump range. Obviously the Cutter does it completely when it comes to a trader, but you can get this without having to grind for that Empire rank, which trust me is painful. Oh my god, I'm giving up at the moment on grinding for Empire rank because it was driving me insane. I went from nothing to count and now I really just, I'm burnt out by it for a bit. So I'm going to take a break from grinding Empire rank. But all in all, this is a great trading vessel and gives you way more survivability than, like I say, the Type 9. Also, it is an awesome res hunting, harvesting, PvE ship. And I know full well from many engagements in PvP that it is an absolute tank in the right hands and a real pain in the ass PvP ship used correctly as a support ship because obviously it doesn't have the flat speed and it's not the most maneuverable thing in the world but I've got to say with flight assist off and if you're willing to throw this thing around it is way more maneuverable than people give it credit for especially if you've got the A-rated thrusters on there you can really throw it around quite nicely and it has a good feel it feels like it's big but it doesn't feel really cumbersome and compared to a Type 9, because obviously I'm used to flying a Type 9, it pretty much pirouettes for its size. It is quite remarkable how maneuverable it is. It actually felt more maneuverable than the Python a lot of the time that I was flying it. All in all, I would say this is a great ship. It's got jump range, it's got cargo space, it's got guns for days, it's got everything. You can outfit it to do whatever you want. My only gripe with it is that you outfit it to do whatever you want and then have to have the rigmarole of switching it to do whatever you want and until you can store parts that's going to be a real pain in the ass to switch roles with it. The other thing is I'm not a big fan of big ship combat. I find flying the big ships not that interesting and I prefer the more immersiveness of flying small fighters like my Diamondback Scout. So all in all it's not a ship for me. It's slightly too big and too powerful. I like my ships to be a bit more vulnerable and a bit weaker but I would recommend it. And that's all for this video and thank you very much for watching.